welcome to the Rewards Workgroup uh, Weekly Sync for December 15th. Um, a lot has been happening this last few days, as always. Uh, and I guess, but my the number of discussion points I have on the agenda for today is fewer than it has been the last few weeks. Uh, so the, the main attraction today will be uh, the RAD um, demo, I hope. I'm looking at uh, uh, Nagel. Yes, yes, it's ready. It's yes. ready. I guess yes. we can show it. Yes. <laughs> yes, great. And um, um, so, uh, and if you would like to bring up any other discussion points, just uh, let me know during the, the status updates. And um, we'll take it from there. So, um, beginning with uh, Mitch, who is not here uh, for the first quant preparations and execution let's skip him for now see if he appears otherwise we'll uh, maybe can uh, make some sort of status update together based on what we have heard we, we um just really quickly from what zeptimus and i have been up to i know we've been actively mm -hmm. recruiting some quantifiers we're shooting for yeah. a pool of 30 we're uh, roughly at like i think 19 or 20 now um, mm -hmm. We brought it up on Communitas, and then we've also got some of the onboarding docs and stuff together too. Cool. So, so you are right on track. No, no blockers, basically. Nope. Oh, no, just um, the Septimus is working through a couple, couple oh. points to get uh, screenshots in for our documentation and stuff. Yeah. Great. And do you, you do you plan to 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 use the, the this larger group of of, uh, of quantifiers for the for, for the trial quant, or, or do you see us doing the trial quant just uh, mostly reward board members and and a few of them maybe, or how, how do you what do you plan? Yep, and Mitch just hopped in too. Um, I believe the the trial quant is going to be smaller, but the pools to prepare for that first one after. But mm -hmm. I don't, uh, yeah. I don't want to speak, Mitch. If if you had a a point there. Sorry, my internet died here for a bit. Um, first sync, primp, and quant. What are you talking about exactly? Uh, we were, we were talking about uh, uh, yeah, yeah, first prep quant. We we were discussing. Uh, um, the quant pool, if you were planning to use uh, th these uh, s approximately 30 people for the trial quant, or if that is mostly preparation for the first real quant? It'd be cool to use them to test because I think they're going to have to use it anyway, so I think they're going to have lots of valuable feedback. Maybe not all of them, but like we're going to have to draft people from that pool to do the to do the, the first quant. So, I mean, it'll be good to have like a thorough round of testing and if they're gonna be using it anyway. Yep. And that will also be a, an onboarding session. So not, not only testing, you're learning together how, how to best use it. So, so when we do the first real quant, we, we'll, we'll have less problems. Exactly, and then we can build build our tutorial, our onboarding documents, all that stuff around what we get from that. Mm -hmm. I invited some of the research crew too. They were interested. Is there anything I can use to share with them, or I don't know what process you guys are having to onboard people or recruit people now? Just adding to a spreadsheet. Well, I've been, I, like I said in the, I put in the. I tagged everyone in general last week and I said in the community call like we have the thread for uh, calling all quantifiers so just like come in there and signal that you want to participate and in that thread I pinned the reward system outlining the reward system v2 in there so um, if they want to participate just come into the thread and signal nice 
Uh, are there any more more updates about the the this topic? I don't think so. Like going through some of the other stuff, a lot of it's depending on having like a, a working product to test. Mm -hmm. There's the reward board description that I put up a couple weeks ago. I don't think that's changed at all. So I don't know if anyone wants to review it. I don't think anybody has. Or can we call it done? Maybe we can call it done up up to uh, to say like most likely it's like ninety percent done, and and we will be able to do the remaining ten percent when we actually get started for real. That because then we will unearth or uncover some more tiny details that we maybe would like to take note of, etc. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, just the last point there that MS may or may not have mentioned. So we have eighteen right now. 16 or 18, I can't remember. And so we're shooting for 30. So I'll probably do another call uh, in the community call and again in the uh, just in the Discord channel. And then we'll try and get to that number. Sounds great. Um, let's move on to uh, the meeting tracker bot and the Viv. Well, uh, so uh, right now the meeting tracker bot is there's some questions that need to be asked uh, and i was hoping that i could talk to someone from source Grid today but uh, the time i scheduled the call they weren't there so probably have this sometime later this week uh but i did get a plugin sort of a plugin work to work and uh, uh let me just quickly just share uh, uh yes is this one demos uh all right so oh wait a minute that's yeah so this is a meeting track uh, external plugin mock-up that we made and you know it, it's kind of simple right now uh but can be extended further so it just follows a semantic of member attended meeting uh and so i added a, te a few tests uh, uh so like uh i think i kept uh, three calls in the data and uh septimus was in all of them Gref was in uh uh one or two of them so uh we had uh we, we have the cred minted for these people uh but there's a small issue which is like uh if there are lesser number of people in a call you get more cred uh which can be fixed, uh, which can be fixed, I can fix that. However, this leads me to the question, do we want some form of customization or do we want to just say, hey, give uh, all these people 0.5 cred, do we want to keep them a constant or do we want some kind of custom factors with which we wait? Because the way source cred works is that it creates a weighted graph so uh because it's intended for that purpose so do we want some form of weights or uh and another like specification is that uh do we treat all calls that as equal or you we say hey the, the param party is on you more credit or we say hey if you're coming to the uh community call that get, gives you slightly more credit or something of the sort or slightly less credit do we want that form of uh dynamics to exist so sorry could could you repeat that what, what is it good to have give i didn't get Is it is it a tool if the only reason people show up is to get is to get rewarded for it?
We we always have, have that option uh, over time to to modify the source cred parameters. So if we would like over time to incentivize meeting attendance more, then we can adjust that upwards. Uh, but I also think what what I was asking is that now the uh, you you don't get the same amount of cred if the if it's a small meeting compared to if it's a meeting with many attendants. Um, and would we like to keep that dynamics somehow? Uh, and if uh, for for a reason, I I think my, my gut feeling says it's 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 difficult to find a, like a clear uh, way of defining making up the rule. Is it worth more or less being uh, joining a meeting with few participants? And for whichever reason would that be? So I I I, I, I think it would you get you. You should get the same amount of cred, uh, whatever number of participants um, were in the meeting. That is my my sense of it. Yeah, I think so too. I think it should be the same. And and just to zap to this point too, this is just my opinion. But I'm in general very not a fan of this like carrot approach. You know, I think mm -hmm. the reward system should like map more and reward what is happening organically rather than try to pull people or incentivize people to go in certain directions. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, to highlight that, that we always have the possibility of, of tweaking over time if we or the, the ones in the reward board would like to do that. That is a, a possibility still. Just a quick question. Uh, is just two people on a, on a call considered a meeting? If it's listed in the calendar or in the events section, yeah. then it would be considered a call. OK, got it. So OK, I, I, I agree with uh, some of the ways that we shouldn't like, uh, keep it uh, dynamic dependent on the like the number of members in the call. Uh, so one I'm wondering about is what do we want that constant value to be just for now? Uh, because I'd have to rig the values to make it work. So do we say a, what's what exactly do we want the amount of credit a person gets for attending a meeting to be? We'll change this over time, but for now. Wouldn't we important? want to have that as a, be able to change that as a parameter? Yeah, uh, we can change it as a parameter, but like I'm asking for now for just testing purposes. Is there a value we can decide on? Uh, because I'd have to see how to make it weigh in a way that you know it it doesn't account the number of uh, participants and it just distributes cred uh, without thinking about that. Do you then set set the weight on on, on the on the edge between the nodes of the? Uh, attending um, edge instead of setting a weight on the, the node of meeting. Is that how you would do it? So now it becomes a bit technical. Uh, so right now it's, it, it's on the edge, it's on the forward edge. So mm -hmm. if someone attended a meeting, uh, they get by default, it's the weight of one. Uh, and then it like weighs it respected to how many people attended that meeting. Uh, ah, so so, so, so they, they they get to share the weight of the the no, the meeting node then somehow. Yeah. Uh, so one thing we could do is that just give them, uh, like uh, make a custom weight and make that dependent on the number of you uh, number of people in the meeting, and then yeah. we just. Uh, cancel out that factor and then rig the values to come into yeah. like something like 0 0.5, 0 0.1, whatever we want to give out. Yeah. So for now, maybe I can keep it a constant, uh, something like 0 0.5, and then it can be dynamic, like if we can choose whatever we want it to be. I, I think so, because it's only in, in the context of all the other parameters, so that it is possible to have, a, have an opinion of what, will the, what should the weight be, uh, because it depends on all, all the other parameters for the other plugins. Yeah, uh, so in, definitely. In, 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 in relation to writing a blog post uh, or write, writing a forum post, for instance. Um, yeah. You would need to weigh, weigh those against each other. 
Yeah, uh, I think I we think should plan for, for doing a, a, like a um, parameter session before the the trial quant with a sole focus of set, setting setting the source code parameters. Uh, yeah, I, I think we can do, start doing that once uh, Hoz is done with setting up source grid. Uh, mm. And then we can play with the parameters. Uh, maybe we just fork an instance and uh, try to see what happens. Uh, yeah, uh, so that's pretty much the catch for this week. And we might have something next week after talking to Thela and seeing like what's what are better ways to do this. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a really quick question about the bot? Um, does it matter? Is it just if I've attended the meeting, it's a Boolean and I'm I'm marked as being in that meeting, or is there like a time parameter or anything for being in there? So this is something I think we were talking about earlier, last mm -hmm. to yeah. last last call maybe, which is it can be anything. Uh right now, uh like right now it just locks uh when you're joining when you're leaving and you know uh, the difference between the timestamps is the amount of time you were in the uh in the call and that's going to be locked somewhere uh in mongo and then the source grid uh then source grid picks it up and uh the plugin calculates a graph and inserts it into source grid so yeah one thing we could do is like uh use time as a as a weight uh but I'm not sure if that's something we want to do, uh, because that incentivizes people to just, you know, stay in calls and not do anything. Uh, well, yeah, I was just wondering from my education side, so thank you. I think we, we started out with uh, it being, we, we said that there needed to be some sort of threshold, uh, and there we said you should be, you should join, um, attend at least 60% of the meeting, more, more than half. And then that turned out to be technically complicated with the old method we we planned, if I remember correctly. And then we sort of said that yeah, maybe maybe ten minutes is okay, uh, to just as a base thing. And but now, uh, by as I understand it, now we could do the percentage if we like again. Yeah, uh, totally. So right now, the current bot just picks up when you're joining and leaving, so it can totally like measure the amount of time you're in the meeting. Yeah, uh, but we would need that, them to know the length of the meeting. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, uh, it uh, like we can get that information based on you know when the event in yeah. Discord ends. Uh, there's an option for you know one of the yeah. administrators that you know end this event, so yeah. we could measure that. But that. Uh, but we can keep it as a default of like one hour or something because most of our meetings are one hour. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, uh, the reason I chose 10 minutes is because uh, the Bankless DAO has a bot that does this for Pro Apps and they chose 10 minutes. So it's like might as well go with 10 minutes. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to propose that we stick with the 10 minute rule just because it's simpler and then if we notice over time that it's being abused then we can modify the bot then um just, just to keep, keep it keep... sorry go ahead no no i was finished um so the bot is combined with the google calendar like you can see every event that is in the calendar plus this timestamp the, the, the discord previously events. Uh, yeah, right Discord now it's connected calendar. to Discord events. Uh, previously, it was connected to the Google Calendar, but then uh, there was a reliance on the events inside the Discord server. So uh, now it's probably going to focus on that uh, because there's a few issues with using a calendar uh, that are resolved with using the events. So the only meetings that will be captured are the ones that are are listed in the discord events the thing and the yeah, discord the events have... is is linked with the google calendar so we don't need to uh, add no. manually no no uh, it, it's right uh, now it's, it's only different. manually uh, but eventually that's something we can do i'm not sure if we want to do that uh um but yeah that, that's that's certainly that 
something that can be done uh, there were some some technical considerations there first we we plan to track the google calendar but then there's the issue of how do we know which channel for instance people are meeting in how do we convey that information then that would require all the meeting facilitators to before they start a meeting to somehow announce to the bot that we are meeting in this room and and we sort of assume that this will not uh, <laughs> that that will not happen everyone will not definitely not remember doing that every time so it felt like tracking the discord events it's a, that is a foolproof solution then we will track those events 100% instead of having a more loosely coupled uh, tracking where you can track uh, more or less stuff that you you add yourself to the calendar but but then that would require require much more of you as a facilitator to remember maybe also to start the meeting and maybe also to stop the meeting tracking etc so it, it has a sort of a plus and minus uh, To, to be discovered, I'd say. <laughs> uh, yeah. So right now, I think it shouldn't be an issue. So uh, the current version, uh, the current version just assumes that the call is going to ask, uh, last for an hour. It just queries the event list and sees, you know, if an event exists. It doesn't care about if it's started or not. It just checks if it exists, and then it assumes that it's going to last for an hour. Uh, so yeah, that, that's <clears throat> that's how it's working right now. We can keep it that way. But if you if you wanted to be aware when an event is starting and ending, then uh, the downside you mentioned would be would definitely be there. Yeah. Cool. So can we move on to the next item? Okay, I think we should. Yeah. Um, so for the the pollen bot, uh, Matteo is not here today. Um, as far and by you have also some insight into this. As far as I know, the the, the only thing that needs to be done for the pollen bot is uh, to um, do some some configuration to make sure that the different parts of the, this bot the, the bot actually contains of uh, three different uh, components that ha uh, have a separate uh, GitHub repositories and and all need to interact uh, using GitHub Actions. So there needs to be we need to give those uh, sort of access to each other, etc. And that is not uh, one hundred percent online yet. Uh, and also, there's the the, the rebranding issue of, of um, not calling it the the pollen bot for for us, and and uh, making sure it has a TEC logo instead of a pollen logo, etc. And uh, but but Vai, I think you are you are on the, the, that one, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'll rebrand it. Uh, that's something that I'll probably work on today or tomorrow. Uh, and, and I think that what's left is basically like integrating all these parts together and seeing if it works, which I think might happen sometime this week if we like sync up. Uh, I start talked about like having a sync up call. Yep. So uh, no, no, no blockers uh, other than our calendars. Uh, and so what, what's needed, I think it's an, an hour or two, um, a joint work session where we just do the last uh, configurations, etc. Um, so let's move on to praise uh, backend, and uh, unfortunately, the the uh, backend development has been slow the last week as well, same as last week and the week before. Um, I hope to be able to announce soon uh, some more uh, traction <laughs> in this area, so we 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 catch up with the rest of the rewards upgrade. That is all I would like to announce for for today. So um I'll, I'll pass it to to nebs for the praise front end thank you uh, so most of the time i spent on the endless scroll feature and it's working now but christopher gave me a lot of help with it so, 
and a uh, few, few other features like and date editing on on periods and we had some issues with icons and stuff like that but endless scroll is a big feature and it's done so i'm happy about that and you might say that the the, the praise front end is uh, alive and well really so so it's uh, yeah. most of the uh, difficult stuff is done and and um, so once the back end uh, catches up then then the rest will be quite and done quite uh, quickly uh cool we've spent a half an hour let's uh, move on to the the main event the rad uh the rad demo or maybe you would like to say yeah yeah no i, I just uh, i'll pass it to you I, i'm not saying anything. Yeah, well, I think we can go to the demo directly. I don't think I can have an hour with it, but <laughs> but but yeah, um, I just I just share my screen. There were some some changes from yesterday because the MS found a great solution for this download issue we had, so that sorted out. So big praise there. Um, give me a second. And here, so can you see my screen? Is it working? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So well, this is the the notebook for for the analysis, and yeah, we try to keep it um, uh, as simple as possible. Just the, the minimum necessary code on this part. We have another separate file where we can put a bit more of, of code in it, and yeah, I think I'll just walk you through it. I try to describe every step also in the notebook so everybody can just uh, read it and follow along what is happening. Uh, right now I'm using it locally, but this will be on a, on a binder online with any, which anybody can just open and then, and then play around with. So first, let me choose the files. In a second, it has to start up. There it is. So you can just choose the files. I made some some mock praise and mock um, uh, source spread data data and also reward board. There we have it. And once you select the file here, you can just you know run all below, and it does everything automatically. You have to, don't have to do anything else. And yeah, so basically what what this does is it kind of takes the the data we had. I'm printing too really much data right, right now. Sorry. Um, I try to print more than usually just for, for this demo. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, this um, here at the beginning, you can set um, how many tokens you want to distribute and uh, how you want to apply that. So, in this case, uh, I did around 2,000 uh, tokens for the praise, 2,000 tokens for Postgres, 500 for the quantifiers, and 100 for the reward board. And you set the, how you want the file to be called, the output file. And if you change anything here and just run it, it updates for the... Uh, so if you change anything, you can run it again, and it updates the, the graph. So you can also like play around with it and see, and see um, how it looks. So yeah, um, well, first it just takes the data and uh, cleans it up a bit, and then it combines it. And it also prepares the, the praise by user. So it kind of puts um, together um, all the users that use the, the system and adds up each separate praise they had and, and how, much, uh, how much tokens they will receive. It also takes the raw praise data and um, sorts it by quantifier. So you have a, you can see uh, yeah, which quantifier had which praise and how we valued it. So you have it all together so you can also make analysis on that side. And yeah, and then you just combine it and um, it tells you how much tokens the, the, each user gets from source grid and the praise. Here's a little key. And then you can you get to analysis. 
it's a bit basic for now because uh, as we talked, the the reward group is probably going to get a lot of cool metrics which we which we'll use. For now, I'm using the ones that Octopus uh, did for Praise Gate. And uh, yeah, so we get first, we look at the percentages, allocation percentages. So top 50, in this case, in this random data, top 50% of the praise receivers hold 94% of the rewards, which is a lot. Top 20% has 50% of the rewards. And, and so you can get a look of that. The Gini coefficient, the Shannon entropy, which would mean that zero would mean that one user holds all the rewards. And so the higher, the more distributed they are. It's, I, 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 yeah, I always explain it first. So or we always explain it first so people can just read it and know what, what's, what it's all about. Um, yeah, and then we get to the, to the, bra to the brace uh, analysis. First, we just show um, yeah, how often each brace, um, each brace valuation was used. So since we had this um, choice of five different valuations from zero to 144, uh, yeah, how often each one gets gets chosen. So you can so you can kind of see, if, for example, people are just valuing very very high or very very low, and maybe that's kind of so maybe we should change that or change back to the seven different numbers, whatever we. We choose, then we get a look at the distribution. So uh, we can visualize here each uh, which percentage of the total praise each user got. So in this case, we can see it's like it's a uh, Pareto uh, distribution, which uh, well, it's the mock data we, we created for this is using this since the old praise uh, distribution ended up being like that. But it will just show how, how it works and sort it by, by size. And you can always check out how each, each in each individual how much you got. Then we have this amazing um, graph that Invent and Chill did from the Praise Research Group, which uh, shows you, yeah, where the praise is going. So here you have the the top. Um, give me a second. Top twenty praise givers, top twenty five praise receivers, and you can just yeah see. Each single each single stream and the rest. If you want to change it, you can just change the number. For example, we can change this to thirty, and this to thirty-five, and then we just have to run this again and this again, and to give it a second to calculate, and then we and see more data. Uh, so yeah, and then we continue with source grid. We have the same for source grid. Um, each how how what which percentage each user of the source grid got. So we can also take a look at it and see if there are there are some big disparities or not. Um, then here we have the quantifier data. For now, it's only looking which percentage of the total praise each quantifier did because we since we are um, uh, assigning always. Uh, one quantifier to one user, it could end up being that some quantifier does more, a lot more praise than somebody else. So this would kind of keep in check that we see if this happens. And of course, any any other any other um, yeah any other analysis that the, the research group comes up with can be implemented here. And yeah, and so now we get to the in the last part is just. Calculated the quantifier rewards. How much? How much we give any, anyone? It, this for now it's equal for the reward board and the quantifiers. That can be changed, of course. And then we just um, prepare the final data table, which tells us, yeah, it is each user how much praise they got, how much source grade they got, uh, if they got rewarded because they're a quantifier, if they got rewarded because they are part of the reward board, and finally, which is the total number of tokens which then at the end we also can visualize so we can see again each user and how much they got from each side the cool thing about this is you can uh, remove something so for example if we want to get away this quad reward you just click here and it disappears and you can see the distribution there or you can just get it source grid and put the quad reward so you can kind of you can take a look and and see how it affects everything and then finally, um, you can generate files to download. To download, 
um, to just click them and and download them. This one is the the basically this table put into a file, which is the so the final distribution for for future reference. This one is a simplified distribution, which is comp compatible with a Disperse app, which is a, a common tool for sending tokens to large groups of people. So this is just copy paste into the Disperse app, and it should work once you set the the token you want to send. And this one is the the complete praise data that we have that we generated before with you know the each quantifier and which modifications and what percentage each single praise. I, I can I can just show it. Maybe it's easier. Let me open it. Um, can you see the Excel file or? Maybe I should change. No. Okay. I can just we'll see, still the see the notebook. Okay. Uh, oh, great! It doesn't. It doesn't let me share it. I think it's some permission stuff. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but basically, it's a big fat Excel file which has the whole uh, raw praise data and um, the, uh, how much tokens each single praise gives. To is value that in the end in this final valuation. So yeah, so that's it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> it looks really great. Yeah, it I looks great. To, I want to play with that. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll try to put it onto onto a binder and uh, drop the link into the rewards channel. But you can you can uh, download it and run it locally right now. So feel free to do that. Yeah, do you have the repo? Yes, I have it. Give me a second. Drop it in the reward system. Yeah, amazing work, Nugget. Looks great. Um, I have one and one question. It, do we have anything that prevents one quantifier from quantifying their own crates? Um, I think that, that is backend stuff. Yeah, that that would be a, a rule in the in the in the praise system. Hmm. Actually, we haven't taken note of that. It's a good good pointing that out. Uh, but, but obviously, yeah. Cool. And then but just it, one it, other. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. Anyone no, just one other thing that I go, go ahead, MS. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Um, so you see how the graph from Andy, how the one that shows the receivers and the givers. Yes, I, I show it a second. Huh? Yeah, this is more of a cultural something that I think we can discuss. But you see all that blue is Ivy. And and she's showing up like that because she's been dishing all the praise for uh, forum contributions, for Twitter contributions, and all of the praise from the community calls. So we have... Like that is the, making the data dirty, and and now we're gonna start to see Mount Manu too with that like large chunk. So I think it's time to move away from that. <laughs> like I think it was a great idea to have IV dishing praise and to incentivize people to come to the community call and give like voice their praise and know that that was taken account of. But I think everybody started to write their praise anyways. And we're like grown ups to dish our own praise. <laughs> and maybe we should like move towards that. So in the future, we don't keep having this discrepancy of, 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 of data of like who did what, who is rewarding what type of contribution, who is it attached to who. Because this graph, if this wasn't happening, this would give us such a good overview of the relationships of the community. And now it's all messed up. Um, yeah, totally. Fun. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Fabi. Uh, I have a suggestion for that. Uh, since we're making the bot, we might as well like add an extra command inside the bot. That's just like uh for anyone in transparency or anyone working with uh this data who's like dishing praise or calls there's a separate command for them and they can mention from whom this praise is going to who and they're just typing it out now again that's slight disincentivizes them because i think they uh, we were planning on giving them some small amount of uh cred or something for doing that but we can like praise them separately for doing all the work uh, and they can just specify who's praising who. That is uh, technically possible. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm not sure we, we would want to prioritize that for version one. But, but uh, yeah, let, let's note it and, and discuss it and consider it for future versions, at least. Yeah, it's good that there is a technical solution for it. But I feel like it creates one one possible error point of yeah. one gaming point that we don't know who i mean now we're all like kind of a manageable size but what if yeah. this goes wild and then people have access to this different command and they can just start like messing up with all the data i think it would be better for us to just like culturally like take ownership of all the praise that we dish it definitely opens up a, a, a door for making the, the data really noisy. If we were to allow many people to praise on behalf of others, we would also need to track who who was the uh, who, who was the the, the praise uh, uh, who delivered the praise for for another person. So that would be another data point that we would like to analyze and, and track. So it, it, actually, it's it is a bit. It adds another layer of complexity, and I would really like to keep the core praise system a really uh, a simple uh, maintaining. You know, it's a simple uh, heritage. <laughs> um, but but it, it, using this uh, this this dashboard, imagine using this uh, biweekly over over a long period of time. The the amount of insight that we will gain by, by doing this into a, a uh, a, a ritual almost like a bi-weekly ritual where we go through this and, and have the insights uh, the discussion hopefully have insights uh, tweak the parameters tweak the analysis and and for each uh, each period coming to greater and greater uh, conclusions and, and yeah and what, one thing that struck me is that we need really need to uh, um, make it part of the process that we um, Backup or or store the final distribution for for, for each period because this, this will be a, a the dashboard will be a living document. So if you if you open up the dashboard uh, three months later, it will have a, uh, maybe other parameters and other analysis that wasn't there three months uh, before. So if you do analyze a, a an older um, praise data set, it, it's not. Um, Guaranteed that you will get the same result again. Um, do you, uh, did that make sense? Yeah, I think I remember talking about this somewhere in like either a reward board or quantifier call, and it'd be cool just to like export all this. And I think there's a couple different options that Nuggin had at the bottom for exporting the data. Yeah. And so then we would just export like graphs, raw parameters, the values, everything like that, and then save it somewhere. We'll ideally publish it somewhere. In, into the GitHub repository. My, my proposal was that we, we have for each period one folder in the repository where we have the data files and we also have the, the, the final exported files. And, and you might as well uh, uh, print the, the notebook as a PDF. And uh, put it in there as well, so so it is really easy for someone to just go and look at the data afterwards, look at the analysis without even having to run the um, run the notebook. Mm -hmm. Because then, if we have a, a PDF for each period, uh, th th then you can we can easily set up a static web page just linking to all the periods. You can just click and you can really fast go through lots of periods and, and view them. The what? neat thing is that uh, GitHub renders uh, uh, renders these notebooks as uh, as images, something like an image. So uh, we can still view them on GitHub too. 
for now. Yes, but but that won't be a historical uh, uh, valid thing because the, the it, it's one one notebook, many data sets, and, and the notebook changes. Uh, the, the 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 formulas can change, the parameters can change, um, etc. So so the notebook in its current form, the notebook book is a tool, and the the, the data will stay the same. Um, but my, my initial suggestion was that we we copied the, the notebook to each uh, and made a new copy of the notebook to. Uh, each uh, new period folder, because then the actual the, the notebook would also be a sort of a historical document of how did the formulas exactly look at that time. Um, but that, of course, that that is still the option now. Now, because now now we have we are doing one uh, one notebook where you instead open up the old uh, op choose which data files you open. Could it be solved with versioning? Christopher, so if, if we just, when we do the export and we put it into one of the folders, it's stated in our, our Yeah, but, but it's, it's still period. not a one-to-one. -one, one, uh, if I would like to uh, view, uh, I would want to recalculate, uh, reanalyze a, a period, 13 periods back, that wouldn't necessarily mean that we have 13 exact versions of the notebook, so I can move back 13 versions how would I open up the correct version of the notebook? It would be difficult for me to know which yeah. version. Yeah, I almost wonder if we could keep the different versions, though, because one of the things I think would be an interesting thought experiment, too, is as the the binder continues to come to life and take shape, the notebook, sorry, um, it uh, just for me, because I'm, I'm a nerd, but I would love to even take like future versions that we get to with algorithm changes and look at past analysis and see how it would have played out with those future versions, too. So I don't know if yeah. we could just keep each of the versions as their own notebook file too. So that way you could actually traverse. But then when you go to a, a praise period, you can see which version was used to compile that final output. Uh, yeah. So yeah. If, if it, the uh, Guinness uh, study, yeah, sure. uh, go on. No, I, I just want to say that that if you have a, a, if each praise period, if we export a PDF as well, um, based on this, then of course the, the the version of the notebook could be visible at the top. And when we do a new version of the notebook, it we give it the new. We use the versioning standard, so that then you can easily see that th this period used this version of the uh, of the notebook. And also, we would need to make sure to use GitHub version uh, tracking and mark it as a as a release every time we we make a new version, etc. So you can actually move back in time and and open up version 0 0.0.5 again, if you would like to just do that analysis again. Sorry, uh, Vai, please go ahead. So I, I think one of the things that we might want to do is like uh, a make uh, make an updated uh, uh, notebook that can you know interact with all of the older data and the new data, but we also keep our older notebooks around uh so uh, if if we don't want them to be like accessible normally to people we can like since we're using github for this they'll they'll probably be stored somewhere in the git history so we can yeah as christopher mentioned we can make releases to keep track of those uh or and another thing is that uh all of this code in the notebook is eventually going to it, it's just python so we can probably make a website uh for it but that that's a larger project but in like in terms of future applicability i think it would be neat to have uh, a dashboard for this uh if that's something we might be interested in looking into yeah it has its uh, ups and downs uh benefits and drawbacks uh it, this has a, it's a huge um benefit you using the notebooks this way that you can always uh, continue to evolve them really easily and like uh, the nugget show you can you know just adjust a few parameters in in a formula super easily etc and one one way of doing versioning of the notebooks really a, st a stupid simple way would be that when when we do a new version of the notebook we copy the notebook and we name them uh, 0 0.0.1 we, we have them all in the same folder so then then you don't need any like expert github knowledge of opening up an older version it will just be a list of notebooks with increasing numbers in the same folder so you can basically choose anyone can really easily choose which version of the notebook they would like to bring up to analyze which uh, 
uh, which period data they would like. Uh, tiny. Yeah, maybe uh, we are approaching the end of this uh, session. What do you say? Do anyone else uh, want to say something, bring something else up? We have five minutes. I just no? like to say, especially, uh, especially the graph, the, the graph that shows you the flow of praise, I really like that. That's an interesting visual. And like moving forward, this is going to give us great insights. So really, uh, I just want to say really awesome work. Yeah, agreed, totally agreed. I, I, my favorite today was yeah. the, the last graph, uh, the, the one that show you how, how the different, uh, sort of the different streams of, of you get token as, tokens as a um, uh, quantifier, as a praise receiver, etc. You and how it combines. I'm glad you like it. I, I also I also love what what Invent and Chill did with the praise flows. I think it's amazing. It's going to be very useful. Hmm. Cool. Uh, that's it for today. Then, uh, thank you all. And. Uh,